You're listening to Sith Disturbers. More jammed transmissions from the Farce users at the Tumbling Saber Podcast. Proud member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Network. Fasten all seatbelts. Seal all entrances and exits. Close all shops in the mall. Cancel the three ring circus. Secure all animals in the zoo. Give me that, you petty excuse for an officer. Here come the Sith Disturbers. Sir, and you better buckle up. Ah, uh, buckle this. Sith Disturbers podcast. Go! website get your brains out of your feet and visit starwarscommonwealth.com and take your first steps into a larger world hey everybody welcome to the first installment of sith disturbers glad to have you here with us i'm kyle i'm Corey, and i'm james wow lovely to see you guys here again um what the hell are we gonna talk about this week I really probably we should have thought this out a little bit better but uh anyway we're, we're glad you're here we're going to talk some more star wars we're going to talk about a few other things and uh we're going to have some fun doing it so if you've been listening to the tumbling saber podcast do you know how the drill works we usually talk news uh that is not what this show is this is this is other things mostly related to star wars but uh for now let's uh let's touch on something that we all kind of talk about mostly off air but sometimes on and uh, this Sunday we saw the return of The Walking Dead. And somebody, I haven't seen it yet. I'm pretty sure you guys haven't seen it. Somebody's head got caved in by Lucille, the Louisville slugger. And uh, the episode aired not too long ago. So, so, so the answer is out there now. I still don't know who it is. I, I don't care to know until I watch I'll it. I'll tell but you, hang on. You guys have any... on Twitter here. No, I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Corey, you're the worst. The worst. Man, you want to know, James? I'll, t- I'll tell you. <laughs> Don't tell me. Kyle, block your ears. <laughs> the, I swear, if you, you're, you're the worst, you're, you're fired. You're fired if you if you tell us who it is. <laughs> that was the worst Trump ever. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. <laughs> Were you doing the Cobra with your hand at least? Of course. No, but really, I'll fire you if you if you spoil it. Yeah, let me just open up Twitter here, <laughs> just so I can know. Yeah, you're, you're really gonna you're going for it. I don't really care. I, I, whatever. I'm so far behind on this show. I've, I haven't even. I hear great. So, so I can. I can't even ask you. I can't even ask you who you think got well, it. Well, I, I. You can because there's a lot of speculation on the internet out there on Twitter and Facebook. But I do hear that the. Uh, if it's, I'm sorry to say it like this, but if it's the Asian guy, I hear there's going to be quite a, an uproar. <laughs> the Asian guy. I don't know their names. I don't know any of their names. Not even the main guy. Uh, that would be. That would be Glenn. Okay, well, Glenn gets... I thought you used to watch The Walking Dead. No, I have not seen one episode. Oh, man. You know, horror really turned me off back in the day after I saw Saw. I just... Uh, Are you I never stuttering? back into it. Are you stuttering, no. Corey? Oh, after you saw yeah. Saw? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just basically, I, I just left the feel- theater feeling, like, not good about myself and said, why would I do this? Like, so I, I don't really watch horror too much anymore to be honest i don't know if i consider this so much horror like I, i'm very intrigued and most of my very good friends that i trust say that it's amazing so i'd like to get into it at one point but i've come to terms with the fact that if anything like i, I will be spoiled that there's no way i can avoid it at this point the way people talk about it well in, in the comic books it is quote unquote the asian guy that gets it glenn is the first victim of of uh, Negan's Louisville sl- barbed wire wrapped Louisville Slugger, and uh, I don't know who. Like I said, I don't know who gets it in in the season seven premiere. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Glenn. This I think I think it's him. They, he he nearly died so many times in season six that uh, I don't think he can keep avoiding. Is, is nine lives right? Uh, Exactly. I I don't think he can keep just avoiding death like that. What like because I haven't seen the sh- like I think I might have seen one 
clip of it or whatever, but it's not like it hits him once, I think. It hits him, like, repeatedly. Repeatedly. Mm. Yeah, and each time you hear, like, a little more of a squish, more of a squish, and then sort of like a, a watermelon shatters, and the lights go out. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty grisly. To say the least. I, I can only imagine... The, I can only imagine what what that scene will look like from you know, the regular point of view because uh, J- James, how far behind are you? I don't know. I don't know if, if you're if you're out on this show. I know you were in at some point. You you would binge it, but I, I don't know. Is is this sort of like a done deal for you? Well, I'm pretty far behind to to try to pretend like I'm not going to find this out before uh, I watch it. I'm like three seasons behind, but I'm not trying to find out. <laughs> I'll let you know, James. Don't worry. Yeah, I know you will. You're the worst, Corey. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed, Corey is the worst. <laughs> so yeah, the, the season six finale ends with a point of view shot of whoever oh, gets I've heard. it. I, yeah, no, you, you don't know. If I know it's... what's going on. I'm up to date on the uh, on the uh, who shot Jr. Is there any like reference points like JFK style where like if you see it from that person's point of view that you can kind of like see other oh, people that... that eliminate characters from the equation? If you if you think Star Wars fans can go in depth, uh, you haven't seen anything. It's crazy how, oh, well, the lighting is like this and the angles of that and... <laughs> It's it's mad. It's mad how, how the Walking Dead fans broke this down six ways from Sunday to try and come to a conclusion of uh, to who who didn't get it or who definitely did get it and uh if if negan is anything like the comic book version uh, apparently he does not kill women or children and I, I don't know if they'll keep that part of the character in in the series but uh i i, I saw the little red light recording on my pvr so it's there waiting for me so I have to check that out uh, sooner than later because I, I do I don't want to be spoiled. Don't talk to Corey; he's the worst. The worst. <laughs> yeah, you should probably have your wives read your my messages. I'll just like drop something in there one day. Hey guys, no, no, don't even. Sometimes a lot of the time I do do it by accident, but you know for the most part I really don't. <laughs> you know. Do do. Like I said last time, James, I, I had respect to ask you enough. You know, I didn't just say like, "Hey, guess what." I like you'd be a great clickbait clickbait writer. No way. Well, maybe I would be, but I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't speak that low. <laughs> this show is way more fun because we're tired. I like the way uh, James phrased it. Tired. We're like, we're, we're dads. We could write awesome clickbait stuff, but it would be true still. Well, then it's not clickbait. Sure, it is. We just write it properly. But clickbait is not written properly. That's what makes it clickbait. No, we had this discussion like. You can kind of word it in a way that you could still make it intriguing to the fan. It, it's more a matter of getting a scoop on the news as opposed to. Yeah, but I think Kyle's implying that there's know. now a negative connotation on the word clickbait itself, and you can't have good clickbait. Yeah, when people start making t shirts about it and stuff, for sure, it gets that connotation. Who would do that? Although, if somebody did make a, 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 a anti clickbait shirt, I'm sure it would sell like crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a great idea. On tpublic.com slash tumbling saber, you should check it out. I would do that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, James, do you have a guess? Just um, for the record, do you have a guess as to who gets their skull bashed in? Uh, who knows for sure? I'm actually going to say maybe there's two dead, like Abraham and Glenn. Uh, but who knows? All right. So Glenn's dead. We'll see if that actually, we'll see if I'll that bears out. I'll tell you something out. I do know, or maybe you don't even want to know this, but like I know what the reaction has been on Twitter in terms of like, if this Ooh. if this is a hot episode or not. Do you want to know, Kyle? Uh, no, I will talk about my own experience. I I just quickly went through my Facebook uh, timeline, not looking for spoilers, but I did see a couple people post, man, that was an intense episode. Uh, welcome back. Hashtag The Walking Dead. Just that sort of tone. People consider it enough. My friends don't post spoilers on my timeline. That's it. I have, I have good friends. Or you unfriend people who are stupid. <laughs> uh have i yeah uh, well, i've not really done that yet oh i have I, I don't know any trump i don't know any trump supporters i don't think you, you know what's something interesting too kyle well not interesting but touching upon this last night you know 
uh, lately I've been trying to to live tweet Rebels a bit, you know, with a consideration, trying not to throw in spoilers and stuff. So like, uh, like I said, there's like seven minutes left in the episode, and there's still so much to happen. And I go on Twitter to try and post something, and someone posts the last image of the episode, like the absolute last image. So it kind of gave away quite a bit, and I'm like, seriously. Like I, I I didn't write the person, but I was about to like, I was about to be like, seriously, man, like, what's your problem? Like, you can't wait seven minutes. Well, I, I remember, I can't remember what it was, but somebody once posted a pretty full on uh, spoilery image. Was it from Rebels? I can't remember what it was from. I was like, dude, a lot of people haven't seen this yet. Like, maybe just give it a couple days. And the reply was, well... I'm not going to wait for everybody on the planet to see it. So I, I, I didn't say that. I said just, you know, why don't you just let it air out for, you know, maybe a day or two? Yeah, it's true. Uh, some people just don't care. No, but especially the last scene, you know, like, like seriously. Yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's move on here. We got uh, a big finale to talk about here. We, did, we talked about the season, season premiere of The Walking Dead. Now we're going to, we're going to talk about the finale of the epic rap battle of, among the Star Wars Commonwealth. James, you, you and Rob have been duking it out, la- landing haymakers. And uh, we're, we're wrapping it up here. Ha. If, you ha- if you head over to Talk Star Wars, you can hear uh, Rob's final verse. And that will, that will, and we'll have James's reply coming up here in a second. But uh, James, you, you want to preface this? Uh, yeah, I mean, anybody who's caught last few of our episodes or, you know, the, the boys across the pond at Talk Star Wars last few episodes, uh, Rob and I have been playfully uh, jousting lyrically, uh, putting a two-minute verse here, two-minute verse there, back and forth. I've got the last say, um, seeing as how um, I've got more experience at this, and I set it up that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's rigged. Rob, Rob was this kind is, this whole thing is rigged. <laughs> No. At the beginning, uh, you said... I didn't like, give him a choice. He took his bow and said... Yeah, that's right. I just said, you should go first. And he was like, oh, okay. I'm the challenger. I'll go first. Um, but uh, it's the last one. So we said we'd go three times back and forth. He put his last one up uh, this week. And hopefully everybody took a listen. We'll, we'll play it anyways right before mine and then put up my, la- my last uh, two minutes. Really had a fun time with this. And anybody uh, who enjoyed it, please feel free to comment. And I hope you guys put together a when it's all said and done. This is the last one. You should make a an audio clip of the back and forth of I guess it would come up to what about twelve twelve minutes. Yeah, you're right. It's about thirteen minutes all told, and and definitely we'll we'll link it all up for anybody who wants to watch all of them back to back to back to back. It honestly, yeah, per- I mean that's perfect it's car only ride thir- to work. Yeah, it it should make a Star Wars fans laugh. There's a few quite a few Star Wars fan Star Wars references, Lord of the Rings references too in there. Kyle, you, I don't think you've heard this last verse yet. Is that what you said? Yeah. I, Sweet. I mean, I, I, I'm always sort of you know, in and out of, of the conversations, and apparently I, I, I miss more than one thing. So uh, I've got more paying attention to do next time. No, no, actually, no. Tune out more because <laughs> uh, usually I give these things to you a bunch of days in advance, and, and you get to digest it before you give me your reaction. Uh, this will be more candid, and, and uh, I'll get to see what you really think. So uh, here we go. Cool. All right. So let's let's check out the finale right now, and now uh, we'll, we'll we'll bid adieu. We'll we'll throw some dirt on the epic rap battle. So it's round two, battle lines have been drawn We're using our brains in place of raw brawn There's only one of me, not four, but I'll thrive Born to survive Right off the bat you wanna lecture me on research I've done a bunch of reading, my name will not be besmirched But as a man who's read a share of the written word Why'd I have to draw the short straw, the token nerd? 
I know you think that I'm the lamb of the slaughter, but I'm just glad you didn't do three verses about water. Not to knock the dude, he's a legend, no doubt, but if you're trying to emulate, you cut your own workout. And don't try to brush it off, that was fast stuff I heard. Talking, logging with an end, dude, that's my trigger word. Don't be surprised if I go off for 12 rounds, dropping lyrically intricate sounds. And your threats are falling on deaf ears, sorry to sound cheap, but even with no hands, I'd land safe on both feet. I don't drop balls, not done so since puberty, but you're not gonna use sports just to get through to me. Our battleground is chosen, we're having a flow off, so if you forgive me, I think it's key that we show off. Goliath, I presume, is meant to dismember me, but wasn't it Sun Tzu who said to know your enemy? See, I've been doing research more than you know, James. I watch your great YouTube vids or one player games, but I'm in versus mode, I'm aiming for fatality, but from the Mortal Kombat perspective, just for clarity, I didn't want you checking outside for threats Even though I could cover the distance in just 12 steps It's the big leagues now, we're not playing touch But trying not to worry about it too much We're both friends at the end of the day As long as there's mutual respect, it'll stay that way No, your name should just be Lurch I drop deep verse so hard I make the beat burst When it comes to your nightmares, I'm the worst Spit rivers through these whiskers and you jumped in feet first Your flow's wet, but my flow's wetter Should've known better, go-getters We get the most cheddar I'll put you through the ringer like an old sweater If you're a scotch bonnet, Rob, I'm a force ghost pepper For the record, I don't start fights I finish them MC step to me, I diminish them Till they're under my thumb and I'm squishing them Paint word picture so clear you'll envision them Now I'm swishing them, nothing but net Stepped in the ring with the champ, now you're dripping with sweat And I'm willing to bet that you live to regret Pinning a crazy train against a mental jet You're just a gentle pet, I got a lion's mane No one can rhyme the same, cause my mind's insane I hit the highest plane, like no one has bro So call me Hasbro, I got all kinds of game Now while you play with your package and unbox some toys I'll spit some bars about my tumbling saber boys Brothers Corey and Kyle, total yin and yang Kyle always on point, Corey does his thing Corey's got lots of talents, make you drool when he cooks so high on life, even you would need a stool just to look Kyle's got more Star Wars knowledge than a school full of books Dude clearly went to college, he's no fool of a took You went and called yourself an underdog Well it's no wonder Rob, you're all Loki like Loki And I'm the Thunder God like Aragorn and Thorin I've got a regal beard, throw Thorin Cause I rock the mic like Mjolnir Or maybe Excalibur, cause I'm the next caliber You're JD from Scrubs, I'm more JD Salinger But I'm a good sport and good will ambassador so i'ma flip the script and pay tribute to the challenger i'm not gonna finish this lethal spanking cause palpacino lived up to his evil ranking you rhymed as cold as christmas snow on aretha franklin got more respect for you rob than aretha franklin no need to thank me just get comfy and rest like weed that's dank i'm both funky and fresh and when it comes to winning battles here's a fact that's always true like a jedi you can bet i never try i always do three in the books. Good times, Robbie. Good times. And that's a wrap on the epic rap battle of the Star Wars Commonwealth, guys. Uh, you killed it, man. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, it was, was so, so good. So funny. Um, and a lot of work, man. Like, seriously, this is now that it's all said and done, like, I, I, I can't give both you and Rob enough praise. Like, I don't care if it was just us who heard it. But anyone out there who heard it, I'm sure at one point you made their day because it's, it's just genius. There's, there's a line in there for everybody, and it's just so well thought out on both parts. Hey, thanks, Corey. Yeah, if, if, I don't know if we made anybody's day, but even if we made people smile a little bit, that was the point. It was, it was fun for us. We really uh, self in, self-indulgent. Uh, writing rap battles for, for me is like, uh, I don't know, p- playtime. It's like going to the park. I, I really have fun with that stuff. For sure. Yeah, and I mean, like, you're kind of a seasoned vet at this now, so I, it's probably unfair of me to ask you. So I, I'd like to ask Rob at some point, but this was probably really challenging for somebody who's not done this before. It's got to be pretty tough to, to write 
you know, never mind a verse, but uh, I, how 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 long is this technically in terms of of writing? Uh, I I find it super challenging. Uh, it's funny that I'm the se- the, the seasoned veteran. Like I, I I'm no Rob. Definitely has way less experience. But the fact that I'm the seasoned veteran just means like I've I've written five or six joke songs before, um, which you know <laughs> really isn't very much. Um, so I had a really hard time. It took me a really long time to write this stuff. Yeah, I'm really slow at to, writing writing lyrics. Super slow. To write the way you guys write, though, I could see it taking time. You know, like you can write other things that can. You know, you can get to your point quicker, but not as fun. But another big part of it, too, is the performance. Like, both you guys, you know, just putting yourselves out there and actually, like, you know how hard it is for some guys to sing, you know? like Yeah, well, it's not really singing, but I know what you mean. Like, definitely, even just hearing your own voice. Like, the first time you hear your own voice, everybody hates it pretty much. So you got to get over that and then find your sort of your comfort place where you can just yell at the microphone and not care. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yell at the microphone and not care. Yeah, Rob had to, that's a good attitude to have. Rob though. had to do it in his like living room with his girlfriend around, and she was, apparently the first time he did it, she was like, "No, yeah, mm, yeah. no." <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, this is happening. One of those act now, think later. Yeah, but uh, you know we had a really fun time with it. So feedback, uh, welcome and and appreciate it even. And this is going to go up on on YouTube somewhere, right? Yeah, I actually, in its entirety. I actually filmed uh, some some video content um, to put up at some point. Uh, I don't know if Rob's done it yet, but he probably will too. And we'll, we'll throw it up on someone's YouTube channel eventually. Keep you posted. And we'll 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 pump that link when it when it comes out yep. there. But uh, hats off to you guys. That's uh, that that is a hell of a thing you did. Yeah, hey, thanks, guys. And before we move on, I just want to say to Rob. Um, you know, one last time, uh, way to go, man. This was really fun. Thanks for, for making this project happen with me. Uh, we, we did this really just for laughs, and, and we made ourselves laugh a lot, and we've made anybody else laugh along the way. That, that's great. Um, but, yeah, I, I made a friend along the way. I, I really enjoyed doing this, and uh, hopefully we get to do something again in the future. You know, it, it really was a good time for us. Uh, any, you think there will be a sequel, or you think there will be a, a different iteration of this, or we're, you're going to put this on ice for a while and, and let the juices sort of... Uh regenerate yeah we'll, we'll definitely ice it for a while rob said uh you know if, if if for whatever reason there's a reason you know i need to do more in the future we he, he'd be game um maybe something similar but different or who knows but yeah we'll, we'll ice it for a bit and and wait for the feedback to come in. in 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 the bare minimum at least in the least an annual thing <laughs> yeah who knows you know maybe <laughs> maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do uh uh, who knows? Maybe we'll do. I, I like to do like a Weird Al kind of project and get Paul to animate it. Um, about, oh, that would be sweet. Yeah, like do a Star Wars song for maybe the new movies. Get and Paul's, you know, our our buddy Paul is extremely talented with uh, with the animation. So that that might be a project I like to work on with Rob. Quick sidebar there. Anybody who hasn't checked out uh, Pauly Tune, P A U L Y T O O N. Uh, on YouTube, do yourself a favor, uh, check him out. Uh, he's a stud. Uh, he'll make you laugh for sure. Who knows? Yeah, I think I think Paul would be a good podcaster. Paul and Paul loves podcasts. I bet you he listens. He's the kind of guy who would like secretly listen to this podcast and never tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but he listens to a lot I, I, of podcasts. I think the next the next the next one should involve Kyle, Mark, myself, Stephen, and. Uh, Paul. Yep. Look at Corey just you know, volunteering everybody's there time. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think it. I, you're just like if you're like time. No, you're just like I'm just not. I'm, I'm not going there. Well, the, the, my my next podcast is is uh, with the wife. Uh, that's that that much I'm committed to. I thought she might be joining Otherwise, joining I, us on the show tonight. Uh, who's clinking beers in the background? Is that you, okay. Corey? Yep. Nice, nice. What are you drinking tonight? I think this guy drink. I'm putting it in the case. <laughs> oh, finished? He's already drank it all. Exactly. All right, Corey, let's uh, let's let's dive into the meat of our topic here for the show. It's uh, a little bit of a dive into whatever Twitter poll we have hanging out there that week. So, what what was yours this week? Mine was I, I wanted to get another just general one out there. They've been doing pretty well lately, 
And yeah, this one did really well. We got 344 votes. Look at the size of that thing. Super stoked about that. Thank you everyone Ooh. for the retweets. Yeah, yeah that's a like good 31 that's good retweets. That, yeah. That's a new record? Yeah, that's a new record. Our closest, our next closest, I think, was 338. So we were close. I was watching it. And, you know, I sat back. Once it got wings, like, th like you know, the right people get involved. Like, like thank you very much, Random Minable, uh, Astromech. Like, you guys really help give these things, like, the momentum they need to take flight. So... Anyway, here it goes. It's hashtag Star Wars. Who's your absolute favorite rebel resistance pilot? So you can comment for others as in Elo Asti, Porkins, Hobby, Jansen, Jess Pava, anyone. And your options were Poe Dameron, Wedge Antilles, Biggs Darklighter, and Nian Num. So I just want to start by saying... I, I wait, 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 wait. You're, you're forgetting somebody. No. Said Poe Wedge. You, you didn't say Wedge. I said Poe. You didn't say Wedge. I did. Poe nope. Wedge, Biggs, and Nian Num. Nah, you skipped. E okay. You didn't say Wedge. We're gonna bet on this. And even if you did, I'm gonna edit it out just so that I'm right. I have the recording <laughs> still. Don't you forget it. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, as soon as I hit post on this on this thing, I said I knew there was someone literally lingering in the back of my my mind, and it was Harrison Dula. But I didn't say anything, and I said, someone's, someone's going to say something about this. And again, this, this particular poll got a lot of feedback from the Star Wars community in the sense that like, there were so many comments and so many different people talking about it that I was so happy to see the interaction. And someone finally did mention Hera, and I was like, yeah, you, you got it. Like, she, is, she definitely should have been on this list because you had pointed out, Kyle, that it kind of almost points you in the – solely fighter direction well yeah like when you look at everybody that you listed as elo asti porkins hobby jansen just pava uh poe wedge biggs Nian Num. these are all guys that fly you know, single person starfighters which Hera does do at one point but you know we, we all know her as the pilot of the ghost so i i, I think you you painted and it's not a, it's not a, it's not a fault no, you just have but to you get... you painted a picture. It's even for myself. I painted the picture for myself because I fooled myself. And in hindsight, I only thought of Hera. But again, I thought about it more and I said, why not? Like, people can get creative. I, I just figured it out for myself. Other people can think about it. People ask me, can I say Han or Lando? And I said, whatever, whatever you want, man. Like, it's up to you. Okay, so, well, I... I well, go, go ahead and, and, and give us the results here. Okay, so... Uh, I love these. The numbers really do change the statistics because, again, Wedge was on top for a good long time up into, like, the, the 150 marker. And then it was even. And Poe po came out on top by – he came in at 40%. Wedge came in at 36. Nian Num came in at 16. And Biggs came in at 8. Now, I'm kind of happy to see that Nian Num took out Biggs. Just because, you know, he's a survivor. No, Biggs is a chump. Yeah. Biggs is a chump. He could have a bigger role. And I have to say, like, this is this is not Monday morning quarterbacking. This poll went pretty much exactly as I predicted. The the order, I I nailed this poll. I, I thought Poe would ha would win by a bigger margin. Uh, but the, the one through four, I completely nailed it. I, 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 I'm surprised that Biggs got 8%. Yeah. Harris should have been in his place. And I think... It would have still ran it. Ran oh, in. if you put Hera there, I think Poe if you would have still if you run this top. poll again, ah, uh, geez, I don't know if Poe comes on top if you put Hera there. Really, he might just because ah, man, I don't know. It depends on who's voting. If it's if it's people who watch Rebels for the if all three hundred and forty four people that vote are also Rebels viewers, I think Hera you know runs away with it. But if it's if it's you know, people who watch the movies, if, if casual fans or even passing fans sort of catch wind of this, oh, I'll, I'll take a flyer on this poll. Oh, that Poe guy was pretty cool. I don't know who these other guys are. Then I, I, I think Poe wins it. But uh, yeah, Hera would definitely make this uh, poll much closer. It's interesting. Too, it, I mean, like, it, was there, there was, it, it was a two-dog race that was really close. Yeah, and there was like lots of, in the comments, like, People said Elo, people said Porkins, people said Hobby, people said Jensen, J uh, Dak. Like, it was so cool.
Well, you know what? I'll, I'll say this about Wedge. I had a quick, well, actually, I read a blog this week of a friend of ours. I can't remember the guy's Twitter handle, but it's worth finding because he has a, a excellent, excellent Star Wars blog. Um, what is it now? <laughs> Give me a second. So at Boxerless Bosk yeah. has an yeah, excellent, dude. excellent Star Wars blog. One of my favorite reads. And uh, he posted something that I was already thinking. So I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, he's stealing my thoughts. Um, but he wrote a blog this week about how he believes that Wedge is going to die in the upcoming Empire's End uh, book, which is the, the, sort of the, 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 the final chapter of the Chuck Wendig trilogy. Yes. And you know, I, I'm two books into it. Corey, you're about to hop in. And uh, what you're going to find is is that Wedge is really the only, I guess, original trilogy character to have a, a, a decent role in in the first Aftermath book. And he's, he's in part two quite prominently again. And, uh, well, part three is yet to be told. But I think that's, I think this is going to be the end of Wedge Antilles in this book. No. We, we all know he's not in the movies. He, Dennis Lawson turned down the opportunity to come back. Uh, so I, I, I think it. these books, I mean, this is a three-part book it's, it's, or a three-part story. It's going to be a, a thousand plus pages when it's all said and done. There's going to have to be some kind of uh, consequence for the good guys. And I think, I think Wedge is going to pay the price. What do you think about that? I got, I got two questions for you in that regard. If, say, I had ran this poll after, say that this is the case and Wedge does die in this, does it give him enough Star Wars street cred to overcome Poe in the sense that he dies in a blaze of glory? Or, again, multi-pronged question, if he <laughs> were to have been, if he were to have been in The Force Awakens, would he have overtaken, if both, if Poe was in there as well, but Wedge was there, if if Eric Larson had decided to sign on to Force Awakens, would that have <laughs> I like the slip of the tongue there. You're think you're thinking uh, Amazing Spider-Man circa 1992 with your Eric Larson comment. Sorry. Uh, I would say that yes, if if Wedge was in The Force Awakens, I would think he'd win the poll. I think he would have. I think he would have surpassed Poe. Because I mean, don't don't forget, there's probably a lot of fans, younger fans, voting who have no con- nostalgic connection to to Wedge. And that's that. That's just my guess. I I, I, I have J- more than the the average person too because I read, I think six books of the Rogue Squadron series, which took place not too long after Jedi. Like six books, or like half of six books. No, no, all six books. <laughs> I used to be yeah big on that shit. So James, did you vote in this poll? I did. Wedge. I like Poe. Yes, yeah, so, uh, but his ship does like a natural yeah, thing. Yeah, but I, I, I would expect, I would expect original. Like I went with Poe, but I would expect a, a large number of people in our age group to have gone with the with the nostalgic original trilogy pick. Yeah, I did it for nostalgia for sure. And I don't like the way Poe's ship moves in that move in in, in the Force Awakens. He he should be dead from G forces. <laughs> his innards should. Oh wait, wait, Corey's got hot takes on on how. Yeah. All this is not a problem, it, but, but he, uh, his his insides should be completely liquefied. Absolutely, I wanted yeah. to know one thing if you guys ever noticed this because I have the black series like uh, X wing, like the miniature one that's like die cast steel. Like you, you like his X wing is like super modified compared to the other ones. Like, his, have you noticed that? It's not the same X wing um, whatsoever. I, like it's one S foil that splits in two instead of like there being four. It's two that split into four. Yeah, I hear you. It looks a lot more like sleeker, customized. And, and you think that saves him from having his innards and his bones turned to dust from the G-forces? Yep. If you could travel through hyperspace, you could figure out atmospheric conditions. <laughs> well, it's yeah, it's it's best not to ask questions, right? Yep. Mm. Yeah. Or you could ask questions and then never get an answer. <laughs> well, no, I just don't like the defense. Well, uh, the defense of like um, this other thing doesn't make sense. So 
that's okay that the thing you're you know <laughs> I don't like the like, yeah no I know what yeah. you mean so like whatever, basically, like, whatever. Like, if you guys don't think that like you know f- say humans do progress you don't think that at one point you don't think we'd ever be able to to do what we want in our atmosphere in a way without no. experiencing the g forces you don't think there's a way around stuff no. like that I think absolutely no. you can evolve to the point where your own body can't propel you to g forces that would render you even unconscious like you can't run so fast that you'd knock well, yourself you out with g's <laughs> but if you got but but if you got into a machine what so you no I don't think that what you're saying makes holds weight I think that the, that that machine should have knocked him out. It's not a big point for me, but just his machine moved particularly, and they wanted to make it look like, you know, he was really killing it as a pilot. I get why they, you know, but his machine, his p- vehicle moved in a way that just was unnatural. The way it even changed directions. Never mind what it done to his body. Like, I know Kyle just, would call me crazy in this point, but I, I really <laughs> almost think that it, this is this is canon, Kyle. Like you'd confirm this more than me but from what i remember that there's some canon comic stuff where basically uh luke and poe's mom get these the last forest trees and one of them's planted outside of poe's like house when he he's growing up correct so i don't know that kind of all right what are you getting at? Are you are you going to try and tell me that maybe Poe is a Jedi or Force blessed or something like that? Yeah, like blessed. I don't think he's a Force user, but there's there's something about him. Like I, I would think having that kind of tree planted in your front yard might bestow some kind of like blessing upon you, especially if there's only like one or two left in the galaxy. I would agree with that, Corey. I think that there could be something special about Poe about Poe because of that. Yeah, he's a warrior. He's like. You know, like, he's a chosen one in a way, you know, like, the Force has chosen him to... Oh, here we go. No, not not like that, not... <laughs> but, like, you know, it's the wills of the Force. Like, he's a character that is drawn into the the action. Uh, sh- sure, there, there could be something to that. Well, that was fun. That was fun. I'm glad, I'm glad we all got that off our chest. What else do you want to get off your chest before we put a pin in uh sith disturbers part one how much time we got 10 seconds or 10 minutes i would say we have closer to 10 minutes than 10 seconds okay so if you guys could go back in time and see any of the movies uh in their premiere any of the movies uh any of the seven in the in, in the uh saga which one would you go back and see uh how old would you make yourself and you know explain your answer a little bit like you could go back as an adult and see like, you know, episode one, A New Hope as, a, as you, you now. Or you could go back as a six-year-old or a ten-year-old, you know, whatever age is most sort of magic to you. Oof, that's a good question. Wow. All right. I, I got, um, yeah, go for it, go. Go ahead, Corey. Right. No, I, I have nothing yet. I would say like I would totally – it's hard for me to take back what I saw in The Phantom Menace. Everything was so perfect at the time in my life, like – Kyle, I think that year was 21. I was 18. It was the year 1999. Like, things were just, you know, we're on the cusp of the millennia. The build-up to it, Kyle and I, three years of just hardcore collecting, just reading everything, getting everything we get our hands on. That was really special for me. So when that came to a culmination, already having known Star Wars lore and lived it most part of my life was really special to me. So it's hard to take that away so that was a big one but i'd like to be 11 years old and see the 77 premiere and then again three years later you're 14 you see empire boom like mind blown <laughs> yeah 11 and 14 would be two great ages uh and i like how you doubled up and you get to i i assumed you were coming back after the movie in your time machine but uh <laughs> <laughs> nice nice loophole <laughs> you get to see two movies um, yeah. well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell like, you my no. answer while you think about it too. Uh, so, sorry, go ahead. Well, just the, the aging no, the um, age thing you said, you know, like, yeah, no, the age changes the answer. That's what I was, that's what I was going to get into. If I go back as myself, my answer is different than if I can go back and change my age. Cause if I go back as myself, I go back and see empire and I go back and see like the reveal. And I watch, I watch like 
everybody's reaction at the same time, like learning it for the first time. Um, but if I go back, if I get to change my age, I also choose a new hope. Um, and I go back as like, yeah, I think a 12 year old, uh, to yeah. see a new hope in the theaters for the, for the first time. Yeah. Cause then the rest of this, the trilogy just falls into place with like your age and you're just like, <laughs> you become, a, when, when you become like, what is it? You'd be 14. Then you'd be 17. When Jedi comes out, you'd be a man almost, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, like Luke. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot to be said to going back in time and seeing the original as a child on the big screen. And, and that's kind of where my instinctually knee jerk, I want to say, I, I'd go back as like a, a nine year old yeah. and see A New Hope and just be part of that his, hysteria. Well, you know what? I don't, I don't know. I, I, how much hysteria was there really? I don't. If you want hysteria, it's, it's hard to you say. Get, no, you've got to go to see the uh, premiere of Empire if you want hysteria. I don't think you get hysteria if you're at the premiere of uh, A New Hope. I think you get a lot of excitement, but hysteria is uh, too, too much. I think. Yeah, because I mean, it, it, it obviously it, it racked in a ton of of dough, dough at the box office back in the day, so a, a lot of people were going to see it, and there was certainly a buzz surrounding it. Um. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Empire being my favorite movie, I think, I, I think I would have liked to have gone back as, as like a, you know, I, as a teenager, I was like, whatever I was into, I was obsessively into. And so I think if I had gone back, you know, as, as sort of like a seventeen to nineteen year old, like late teen years. And seeing Empire. It'd be I, fun I think, to watch people know I am your father. That would be fun to be there, to, to, to watch people's minds go, what? Yeah, it's funny that none of us said, like, I'd go back as a whatever age to, to get the answer. Yeah. To whether or not that was true. Like, we're all choosing to, to leave ourselves in the lurch. As desperate as all of us sit here now, wondering... Like who raised parents are, and we want to know so bad. <laughs> like we would do anything right now to have the answer, <laughs> but but yet we we're all choosing to go put ourselves into a situation where we would be having that same question, that same nagging question on on our mind forever. I asked the boys over to talk Star Wars, so we'll see if they come up with similar uh, similar answers. Cool. And I mean, none of us picked the prequels, although, you know, for, for me, like nothing will really ever replace uh, my experience and, and the excitement coming from the Phantom Menace. Agreed. That for me is a, like a, a life changer. I, I was at the premiere as well with a, you know, I saw that you know, we talked about this, but that, that one, I, you know, shivers and chills and lots, lots of really good memories from the premiere of that movie. Yeah. Yeah, whenever I listen to that soundtrack or or watch the movie, uh, I'm I'm back in 1999. That was a a really good summer. Yeah, me too. I, was, I, I remember yeah. going to the. You know, I saw I saw Phantom Menace 21 times in cinemas that summer, and a, a lot of the times I was I was by myself. I saw. Like the first few times I went and I I paid, and then I, I went a whole bunch of times with with friends who knew I had already seen it a handful of times, but they paid to take me anyway because they wanted to see it with me. So okay, oh well, let's let's get in the car and drive over there. And then there, there was you know a handful of times where uh, after work I you know I've got nothing to do, I would just phone home. Hey ma, I'm not coming home for dinner. I'm gonna go see Star Wars again. And I would just sit there for two and a half hours and watch a movie. It, it was a it was a really good time. It was. I was yeah, working at I Annie's. Think, but uh, I, I saw it with Tony a bunch of times. I think. Yeah, that was kind of the drill. <laughs> go go to, go see the Phantom Menace and then go to Annie's. And forget about the Phantom Menace. Yeah. <laughs> I think touching back on what you guys just said earlier is that I think the boys that talk Star Wars are going to be on the same page as us in the sense that, you know, once you kind of realize that, you know, with the age thing, if you could see A New Hope, then, you know, you're going to get to see Empire too, is right? So, No, you've got to come back after the movie. You get back so, in your time machine and you come back. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I was, does that change your answer? Well, it's hard because if I go back in time and 
Like, I, I got to watch A New Hope before I watch Empire, right? I would like, if, if yeah, it does. It, I would go see Empire then. If I know what's going to happen already, I'd rather see the, the, the hype around what happened there. It's hard to, hard to argue with that. That would have been my answer. That's a very close second for me. Empire to see with all the people and all the hype too. Imagine the hype of opening night of Empire. It was, it was like Beatlemania. Oh, yeah. Though, you know what? As, as Hab fans, it would have been nice to go back to May of 77, you know? <laughs> the Habs just, w- just won the cup. Yeah. Imagine, you, you, you'd have seen those. You could have maybe gotten a, a, a little taste of what it was like to be a Habs fan in the 70s. That would, that would have been a nice little cherry on top. Mm. Yeah, Seriously. and you could go back as, a, Corey, we could go back as an 18, 19-year-old and party in Montreal in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a picture the other day. Someone posted. It might even be you, James. Someone posted a picture of like uh, the difference between 1960s St. Catherine to now, and it was so beautiful. Like every building on the strip, from like a miles, had neon lighting. It was yeah, gorgeous. really cool. Eh? Live nudes. <laughs> Lots, that neon sign? Lots of live nudes. No, just anything. <laughs> like any, any, any advertising was done in neon. So cool. All right. Well, let's let's let's, uh, let's put a pin in the show right here. Up at forty five minutes. So I think we've given the people a taste. Perfect. Hopefully, they like what they taste. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Give us uh, give us let us let us know what you think of uh, Sith Disturbers. Let us know what uh, you would like us to talk about on this particular show. Uh, you can do so by reaching out to us on Twitter at Tumbling Saber. Corey, you're at Chop Rules with a Z. And James O. Tommy Bombadil One. Excellent. And uh, otherwise, we're on Facebook and Instagram. Check us out there. And uh, hit us up on iTunes. Leave us a review. Would love you forever for that. And uh, we'll catch you again all real soon. Thank you for listening to. The Sith Disturbers Podcast, brought to you by the Warped Minds at the Tumbling Saber, proud member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Network. Visit StarWarsCommonwealth.com and take your first step into a larger world.